Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Recently, well, a couple months ago, we took a look at React OS, a very strange Windows NT5, aka Windows 2000, either fork or clone. I'm not quite sure which to call it, because it's not actually a Windows version, but uses parts of it. If you thought that was strange, get ready for what I have on the table today. This is Windows Neptune, another NT5 operating system. The strange thing about this, though, well, it has a lot of strange things, but the thing that really stands out is that it was never actually released. Meet Windows Neptune Build 5111. Windows beta releases aren't really all that rare, especially nowadays when you've got stuff like Windows Insider. Back in the day, though, you would get leaked builds of Windows XP, which at the time was called Whistler. There were over 20 leaked builds, if I recall correctly. There are many. But there was only one build of this before it was abandoned. There may have been more that never made it to the public, but as far as I know, there is only one version of this operating system. And apparently it's a very strange blend between Windows 2000 and Windows XP, and even has some features that neither operating system actually incorporated in their final releases. So. Um, you can skip forward about 30 seconds if you if you want to skip the test bench hardware. Of course, Athlon 64 PC, still haven't gotten the floppy drive working. Plugged in an old 40 gig IDE disk, which had a version of Windows 2000 on it, actually. But I'm going to be overriding that. I'm using the onboard uh, NVIDIA GeForce 6100 video card, because it has driver support for Windows 2000. And um, I put in a Sound Blaster card because, you know, just for laughs, what if there's some MIDI on it? Oh, and also, thank you to, um, I put a new PSU in this. It's complete overkill. If you're watching this, you know who you are. Thank you for literally giving me a free Corsair RMX. That was probably, like, the best thing that's ever happened to me. Anyway, without any further rambling... Oh. Alright, so it looks like our new PSU works, that's good. Give. There we go. Also, um, the official cover art, like, I don't have an official disc, so I just drew my own, because it's called Windows Neptune, so I thought a, a fish would be good. You know, whatever. I'm gonna skip the installation process, because Literally no one cares. It's literally just installing Windows. And I'm going to disable our floppy disk so we don't get that error on startup really quickly. I hope this disk does not die on us like the last spin point did. It's a 40 gig spin point. Oh, okay, so it's starting into the Windows 2000 that's already on the disk. Not quite what I planned for. Yeah, and then it just blue screens. All right. But yeah, as I said earlier, Unless there's anything super novel about the uh, setup program, I'm just going to skip it. Because, oh, well, it says Neptune setup there. But this literally just looks like old Windows setup. There's really nothing else cool. I'm seeing a lot of things named Neptune down here, but, I mean, so far it looks normal. So really quickly, I just want to go through some of the notable things that are different with this. So apparently it's got some executables that are a bit different. It's got a bugged script that apparently glitches the login screen, so it takes like 10 minutes for it to get past the login. And apparently it's incompatible with almost every USB keyboard and mouse out there, which is not super convenient for me because that's all I have. So I have like 12 USB keyboards lined up so that, you know, I hope one will work. And um, it's based on Windows NT5, which was used in XP, 5.0 uh, 5 specifically. 
Now, um, you, can, you can download cracked versions of Neptune, because the, that's what you're going to want to do. Because the original was very finicky, you had to use a BIOS date of specifically December 11th, 1999, which is exactly when it, the CD was handed out to participating Microsoft developers. And it's got a time bomb on it, so your installation will uh, lock up and literally not be usable. This is by design after a certain amount of days. It's either like 90 or 44 or something. Now, it just says Windows 10 Professional. Not Windows 10. Windows 2000 Professional Setup here. So, you know, I'll just install it. I wonder what would happen if I tried to repair the Windows 2000 installation already on there with uh, Windows Neptune. Probably wouldn't work. Oh, there's no short format option like there is in XP. Well, hopefully a full, low-level, I think, format won't absolutely destroy this drive because that's what killed the last spin point. I put some drivers on a flash drive for it. I really hope the USB drive is going to work because uh, I don't have a floppy drive. Alright, our disk format is almost done. And I just burnt my hand on a zipper doing laundry. Mom, come pick me up. I'm scared. I don't like being an adult. Wow, look at this. Microsoft Neptune under construction. So it's like the Windows 2000 startup screen that we saw from that hard drive earlier. But it says Neptune. So we've got Neptune installation progress. And then this thing that says comments. What is that? Oh, so this is like a feedback feature. I don't know if this was in any other operating systems or if this is just a Windows uh, Neptune exclusive. So like how many users would see this problem and how bad is the problem? If they put that in Windows 11, Microsoft developers would not get any sleep. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention is uh, a lot of components, like the login screen and the wallpapers, are uh, HTML web pages. So Internet Explorer is extremely integrated. Oh, hey, good timing. This is just so cool. If anyone is in need of uh, starting a fire, I have this old PSU and we'll send it to you if needed. That's a joke, I, I won't. You could probably buy a better PSU for the cost of shipping. Now, um, I named the computer Poseidon because, you know, of course I did. Because, you know, for the, the, the two people that will find that funny. So far, it looks a lot more like uh, Windows 98 than Windows XP. I've never used Windows 2000 but, um, from my understanding, it's more like 98, because XP was just a total overhaul. Although it is, of course, um, not DOS-based, it's NT-based. So it's more, uh, it's more similar to XP under the hood. Alright, here we go, we're booting to that Neptune under construction logo again. It says Windows was starting up. And it's loading settings, so, I mean, it's working. Sorry for all the camera movement, I'm just trying to get it centered on the monitor. We've just got this blue screen with a cursor. You might be able to hear it, there's a lot of hard drive activity. Let's see, can I... No, I can't fix the moiré. CRTs are the hardest thing to film. Does it move? It does move! So our mouse works. But I guess because of the bug login script, we just gotta wait a couple more minutes. Wow! It started up! No way! It works! And it says right here, this is a pre-release Microsoft utility. That's not my name. Come on! I've immediately gotta restart it. Here, one sec. I just want to open Task Manager. 
<laughs> Look at that text. What is this font, bro? That's a very interesting font. That's not used in any other Windows version, as far as I know. Winlogon.exe. That's exactly what it's called in XP. You've got, I recognize a lot of these from uh, from XP. Join DOM, I imagine that's the uh, service to join domains. I want to go to my computer. It's called Compact Disk, which I don't think it's called that in any other Windows version. Also, it's a DVD-ROM, so technically it's, it's wrong. Whoa! What was that animation? Look at that. It's got like a little animation on the Windows icon when you hit that. This is so cool. So in my computer you've got local disk, compact disk, control panel, scanners and cameras. Which again, this might be in Windows 2000, I have no clue. And it's crashed on me, I guess. Oh, so that's like... It says Microsoft Neptune right here. So this is like 9x. I'll just... My documents. Yeah, this is... What a sample. My man. My man. Uh, that's, that's not really a healthy skin color. Just drink more water. Let's see, if I go back to my computer and not crash it this time... What's in control panel? This looks like just, you know, Windows 98, but that's slightly different. 5.00.5111 Here's our product key. That does not look like the key from any other Windows version. NTC, what does that mean? Is compatible with the walking things from Star Wars. Uh, we've got an Athlon 64. What if we go to a uh, hard... No, crap, that's not, that's not the right one. Device manager. Driver signing, interesting. Okay, user profile. Wait, wasn't driver signing introduced in XP? I think they just made it better in XP. Like, I think it was already a thing, but they just improved it. Yeah, everything else I think is just normal. Let's go to device manager, see if there's anything fun there. No, there's not. Alright, so our uh, our creative card is recognized. That's good. By any chance, does it just work out of the box? I'd be surprised. Okay, I'll go to... Local disk. What? Oh, plus two hidden. No defragmentation tool is currently installed. So didn't Windows... I know Windows 98 came with it, and I know XP came with it. I think 98 came with it, at least. I'm not sure. I'll... I'll... figure out how to enable hidden files. Alright, boys, we've hacked back in. Let's see. I'll go to my computer, see... Wow. What is this? I've never seen this in a Windows version. Customize this folder where you can use an HTML template for it. That's interesting. That might have been in, you know, other versions, but I've never seen it. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. Huh. Under favorites, I accidentally found it. There are some, uh... I guess, like, downloaded news articles or something? No, no, they're not downloaded. They're links to the internet. Yep. And also, I knew these icons looked familiar from somewhere. Uh, I recognized him from Windows Neptune, because, of course, that's another NT build. Whoa! I plugged in my flash drive and it actually worked. Well, maybe. Yep, USB mass storage device, disk drive, I mean, I think it's working. Removable disk E? Oh, it's struggling. Oh! <gasps> 
Yo, I think it worked. So it's not running it in very high resolution. Oh, I should have unzipped these. I'm going to go do that really quickly. Oh, here we go. Huh. So there's no Windows folder. Is it in WinInt? Yeah, show files. Will there be a media folder here? Yes, there will be. Interesting. These MIDIs are not in XP or 98. I'm going to look up if they were in uh, 2000. Okay, according to a website online, the only MIDI files in Windows 2000 were Canyon, Flourish, and Passport. We have... we have Canyon. We don't have Passport or Flourish. We've got Batch, Beethoven, and Debussy. That's, that's a joke. I know that's Bach, Beethoven, and Debussy for, for anyone who that will offend. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get these sound card drivers installed so that we can listen to them. And it does the Windows 98 thing when, like, moving windows where it shows the outline instead of the whole window. Ooh, it's like even slower than regular USB 2.0. Because I... If it was USB 1.0, this would be several hours. But USB 2.0, this is only about 200 megabytes, so it should only take... Yeah, it should be taking like half this time. That's interesting. Alright, so our files are still transferring. But I discovered that even without the driver, the MIDI files won't play, but these uh, wave sounds will. So let's listen to a few. That's your typical Windows 2000 logon sound. Then it has all these sounds called Utopia. Let's check out Windows logon. Oh. Yeah, you know, Windows 2000. <laughs> I'm gonna... what is Utopia? Is that just what the sounds are called, or is that... Alright. You've got that on there for some reason. Even though it's also got the Windows 2000 startup sound. Also, it says it was modified 999999. It was modified 9999 at 7 a.m. So, you know. And if I open up a MIDI file, it won't play because I, I don't have the driver. Let's see, what's IR end? Oh, also, we do have Passport. I think I said we didn't have Passport earlier. We do, I just didn't scroll down. A lot of these sounds are still in Windows. Oh, also, I think our drivers have installed. Get some epic uh, NVIDIA graphics up in here. Alright, gotta restart, so this will take a while. I'm gonna turn on the speakers this time, so hopefully we hear the sound. Alright. Well, first thing I'll try doing is unplugging the uh, unplugging from the NVIDIA card and just using like another graphics card because that's the thing that we installed recently. First I'm going to try the different video card and hope it just won't load that driver. Alright, here's hoping this works. Got a 9400 GT in there now which doesn't support Windows 2000. Hopefully my thinking is if I use an incompatible driver, it won't try to load it and then fail. If it's another failed hard drive, I swear. Wait, is that actually going to work? 
Oh my god, it worked. I fixed the driver by putting in an incompatible card. Okay. Oh, that's a CD drive. Okay. Yeah, I, I left the install CD in there. And it started up instantly. Like, usually it doesn't start up that fast. And it, it reopened the last folder as well. Oh, but it's awfully laggy. It's partially just the graphics card. It doesn't know what to do with it. This is interesting. Whoa! It's got drivers built in for Voodoo and Banshee cards. Weird. And then... Oh, oh, there's so many more. ATI, Barco... Creative Labs. For the, for the two video cards that Creative Labs made, because they actually did. Oh, this takes me back. Intel? Matrox? Two number nines? The uh, GTA reference? Quantum 3D? SGI? WD? They made... The hell? What? Okay, if anyone could tell me if this is in any other version of Windows, that would be very appreciated. Uh, there's there's one, one default installed program. Alright, I went to the dining hall, stole a cup of Mountain Dew, because it's the only good drink they have other than Coke, and I always get Coke. And I'm back. Now, really quickly, I just want to try out the desktop. Well, first, I'm going to talk about the driver library, right? Remember how I was really surprised when the Sound Blaster worked before I installed drivers? Because let me remind you, for this same card on Windows 98 or XP, I would have to install the drivers. Because of the fact that it worked out of the box, and finding that huge driver library, like the list makes me think that it's storing a bunch of drivers somewhere on the local disk. Which, if I, if I go to the disk usage, okay, it's used 6 gigabytes. A regular uh, Windows 98 install, 32-bit, which I think this is 32-bit as well, is like, <laughs> is like maybe 2 gigabytes. And XP is what, like 8, 10? If it's just got a crap ton of drivers compressed, that might, like, that might explain the size. But again, I don't know, those, those could just be, like, um, links to download the drivers that show up and um in that in that window and the sound blaster just happened to be compatible or something i have no clue gone fishing what is this doesn't look like there's too much fishing happening here not gonna lie eight color fishing active desktop from internet explorer this is not from windows explorer this is from internet explorer so again, this is an HTML wallpaper that it's loading. Zephotech. Uh, uh, that looks horrendous. There we go, I like that. It's the same version. This is literally the CD that I installed from. All right. Okay, so I guess Neptune doesn't actually come with a finished tour. That's interesting. Driver cache. Is this it? Properties. One file, one folder. 
This might be our big drivers. I-386 driver. Holy sh**. 3,446. I believe that is our driver library. Again, I might just be freaking out over nothing, but I've never seen something like this. Alright, I don't know why the heck it's like... Whoop, okay. Also, it's not called win int, it's called win in t, which makes a lot more sense. Sorry, I, I have eyesight problems. But, let's see, now can I install my Sound Blaster drivers? No, you get a picture of the CD. Nice. Um, auto run? ctrun.exe. Is, is this it? Creative Labs, more like uncreative labs. Hey! <coughs> can I make this bigger? Oh yeah. A whole 800 by 600. Yo! That is just like, ridiculously good. I really hope it doesn't ruin the, uh... It said to take out the CD in the drive, I forgot I installed it from local files. But I hope this restart doesn't just like, uh, ruin it like last time I restarted after installing a driver. Because I do actually need the Sound Blaster card, like, bad. Cranking up the speakers again because I want to hear the startup sound. And I'm going to pull my USB stick out before it starts up, actually, because it might not like that. So hopefully that meant the sound driver initialized. That is the most beautiful thing I have ever heard. No joke. No. Suck it. That, it bothers me that these are like, that they have blue backgrounds. Can I fix that? No, that's not what I want to do. Uh, let's see, what else can I do? Also, it's, it's not 2.12 a.m. So, I think it installed the driver. I'll go to C. We're hearing sound effects. Uh, media. That, that light to lock up like that. Whoa! Okay, so it, it tried to like... Oh, so it didn't actually install the driver yet. Full installation. I love experiencing multimedia content. Come on, I've got to restart again? I would love to restart my computer, in fact. I'm thinking of good uh, Neptune puns for the title. Because Neptune is the... I believe Roman god of of the sea of La Mer, so and of course Poseidon, the Greek god, who they just like stole. But you know, <laughs> I'm thinking of like the Windows version that sank to the bottom, <laughs> or you know something. Jesus. So it it made the sound a lot louder <laughs> when I installed the driver. No, I still don't want to install that driver. Uh, let's see, Windows NT. Yes, of course, show the files. Uh, In view, don't need that, that's NVIDIA. Where's media? What? So does MIDI crash it? That's kind of unfortunate. Gonna make sure it's not a CPU thing. Whoop, gotta turn off always on top.
So trying to open any uh, audio file actually crashes it. If I open it through this, will it work? I'm being especially patient because, you know, I'll check in System32 later. Uh, but I'm being especially patient because, you know, beta, maybe it doesn't know better. I believe this card has onboard MIDI. I will check. This indeed is Brandenburg Concerto, and I don't think I'm going to get a copyright claim from Bach, because he's, he's kind of six feet under. I'm going to make sure that the MIDI is set to creative. External MIDI and synthesizer. I don't know which I should use. I'll set it to external MIDI and see if that does anything. Well, yeah, that does something. It makes it not work. In fact, uh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Even this old... Sound Blaster sounds way better than the integrated uh, GS Wavetable. It gives it a very harpsichord sound, which is fitting for this. Let's see. Alright. Is this any different? I think that's just standard canyon. What is this? Alright, whatever. Nutcracker, my man Tchaikovsky. New Tchaikovsky album just dropped. All right, let's see. Let's try out Debussy. I mean, yeah, it's it's WC. What can I say? Good music. And then that's just Passport. Alright, so the midis aren't like super interesting in and of themselves. Like the actual music isn't too interesting. But the fact that it's not in actual Windows 2000 or XP is the cool part. It's also got this radio button. Yeah, that's a uh, Internet Explorer internet radio thing. And you can, like, you can buy music online, I guess. And then that's another web page. So, again, very integrated with, um... What was I going to say? With Internet Explorer! That's what I was going to say. Okay, I think, unless I find anything else super cool, the video is going to wrap up soon. But as kind of a last thing, I want to explore System32. Well, let's in log on, actually. Default user. I have no idea what the hell that's supposed to be. Oh yeah, also, um, this was the first Windows version to implement, like, user account types. I think it had, like, 
Well, of course, administrator, but then, like, guest and child, or something like that. And, uh, XP was released with that, although I don't think there was one called Child. AU Sims. What is this? Alright. Clock. It's a video clip. Wonder where that's used. Notepad. I mean, it's notepad. There's your sound blaster driver. Task man. Welcome. It still calls it Windows 2000 Professional here. I I know how to use it. Wow, boot. And then you've got your help stuff. Okay, let's check out System 32. Yes. Cat root. Cat mast. Oh, okay. Guess not. OEM zero. I guess these are just like drivers or something. I don't know. Yeah, of course there's your... Then you've got more drivers here. I guess those are just like the default drivers. Reinstall backup rocket. What is rocket? Nope. No rockets. Crap. I meant to do that. This is this is looking a lot like uh, XP. A lot more like XP than 9X. Channel screensaver. What is this? Over here it says Microsoft Active Channels. I don't know what that is. Um, CD player. Wow! Okay. I don't think that's in any other Windows that I've used. It might have been a Windows 2000 thing. Again, when I, when I say that, that's just from experience. I don't know everything. Although it may, in fact, look like it. It looks very standard, not gonna lie. DVD play. Alright, yeah, you, you need that, I guess. You've got some stuff that I don't recognize. If anyone could... Hey, free cell! I mean, yeah, it's solitaire. If anyone could please tell me if these are in Windows 2000, that would be absolutely fantastic. Yes, whiz. IRFTP. In XP, I'm pretty sure it's called Squirt. I'm being serious, like, I think that's the name of the executable. Mars. I remember now. This is another thing that um, that was unique to only this operating system. This is Mars is not in any other operating system from uh, from Microsoft ever. Now, make cab. What is that? I can I can put like a uh, I can put a freeze frame on screen for whatever that was. But Mars was never on any other Windows version, and it won't start on mine, but apparently it was like an internal communication thing. Then you've got more, um, you've got Maze. I'll try not to move the mouse this time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Maze. Spipes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Pipes. What is Verifier? Drive Verifier Manager. Please someone tell me if this is on uh, Windows 2000 because I don't recognize this from anywhere. View Channels. What is this? Again, please tell me 
This seems to work with the channel's screensaver, I would assume. Because it's got the same logo on it. Wait, really quickly, I was gonna end the video there, but, um... Don't click off now, because when I said, see you next time, I turned the PC power supply, or sorry, I pressed the button on the front, and it just shuts off, as if I had flipped the switch on the power supply. So, remember earlier when it said it was AT compatible? Although this computer is ATX, and therefore has ACPI, aka Intelligent Power Management, it didn't send a command to the OS telling it it was shutting down. It just hard shut down. So that's weird. Guess that must be another strange thing about the operating system. That just about wraps it up. So I am going to end the video here. If I find anything else cool, I'll either consolidate it with this footage or make a follow-up. But uh, thank you everyone for watching. That's it for this video, and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.